Right here with Bassmaster Elite Wes Logan out here on. Well, I didn't say what lake we're on. <laughs> no. How about you, you guys? Why don't you guess? Let's see if anybody can guess what lake we might be on. Uh, I've so, had so many bites. I'm trying to catch gar. Uh oh. Hey, if it bites, so what's going on this morning, Wes? that you won't let me tell which one we're on that I haven't been on in a quite a long time. Uh, I got to fish here once the other day. That was the first time I'd been here in probably five or six years. Uh, we're just trying to peck around and get a few bites. I'm sure this time of the year, I mean, we got a bunch of fish in a bunch of different stages of the spawn. Um, I fished a, that little quarantine cup deal on Neely Henry yesterday and I'm in the bush right now. Early in the morning, there was a shad spawn uh, going on pretty heavily, and then around 8 or 9 o'clock, the bite kind of died off. Uh, I'm afraid that might be happening here a little bit, but you st should still be able to get a bite or two somewhere, uh, spawning fish or a post-spawn fish somewhere. All right, well, we got a skeeter question, oh, yeah. and this is, uh, this is a good one. Because it asks for an honest answer. Anything you don't like about your Skeeter or something that you would change. And we're on a FXR 20, right? Yeah. I need to think on that. Because I, don't, I mean, I want to be honest. Because there is a few things that, not saying they're bad, but as far as me being a serious tournament angler that I would, uh, might would have reconsidered. Uh, About all the compartments are fine. There's nothing wrong there. The only thing about the storage is there's no, as far as a little dry compartment beside the driver's seat, like where you would put your phone or your wallet or something, uh, we're lacking that. That's really the, the one thing that has bothered me the most with the boat. And that's really a like minor detail. I mean, that's no, that has nothing to do with the performance of the boat or anything like that. That's that's just one thing I noticed as soon as I got in the boat, there wasn't a little place to put your phone or something if it happens to start raining. But there is a compartment on the other side in front of the passenger seat, just not on the other side. At the driver's. So, if that's the worst thing wrong on this boat, I think they've done a pretty good job. All right. And he's watching from New Jersey. Appreciate you guys uh, hanging out with us. Scottsboro, Alabama. And I thought I saw somebody. Are y'all on Logan Martin? Yes, sir. We are out here on Logan Martin. Logan Martin. World famous. Number top 25 in Alabama. I don't know how that was possible, but that's what it says. All right. All right, will you fish fast till you get a bite and then slow down, or what's uh, kind of your mindset today? Uh, yeah, I mean, you need to cover as much water as possible. I think, uh, like, I mean, obviously the fish are going to be in the backwater or pockets, and either way, they're, most of the large mouth probably aren't going to be on the river yet. Uh, and you're going to hit pockets that are dead, um, that just don't have a fish in them, and then you might hit one or two that are full of them. It's just, until you find those key little stretches, you do need to be covering some water, but you need to be fishing thoroughly too. So as, as fast as you can fish thoroughly is kind of what you try and do, or what I try and do this time of year. When you get to a good piece of cover like we've got here, I mean, you want to slow down and kind of pick it apart. Uh, got some lay downs in the back of the spawning pocket. Not saying there's always going to be a bite in them, but it's just a high percentage area. You don't want to pass up and just fly through. So what's your setup you got starting off the day here? I'm flipping a Z Crawl Jr. on a 5 16 ounce tungsten weight. Uh, I like to like lightweight flip and shallow water flip with a 7 6 medium heavy. Uh, I'm actually using a one of Randall Tharp's art offshore rods. It's, it's basically it was made to be fished offshore, but it, it's a really good shallow water flipping rod. I've, I've, 
I had a lot of success with it. I don't lose many fish uh, up shallow just because it's got a pretty good bend to it. But it's still got enough backbone to get a good hook set on. Seeing a comment about uh, volume. Is anybody else having that problem? And while people are having trouble hearing, I'll tell you, Paul, a uh, guy named Paul Benson asked, who, uh, who's your hero in the fishing industry, uh, other than him, of course? Yeah, I was about to say, he has to be number one, for sure. Uh, he might take number two. We'll just put him at one end, too. About that. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Paul, he's a good one. So you prefer going fast? Uh, not really. I mean, fishing fast. I just like covering water, being able to catch them, you know, swim jigs, spinnerbait, and stuff like that. And I mean, we obviously don't have ideal conditions for that. We've got bluebird skies, post front. It was cold this morning. Um, yesterday morning when we fished, it was cloudy. The wind was blowing. It was warm. Uh, now we've got complete opposite this morning. And everybody knows largemouth are a lot thick, are, are really fickle. Um, when it comes to weather changes, especially this time of year. And like I said, I think I think a lot of these fish are getting in on that shad spawn uh, first thing in the morning. And in a tournament situation, you know, you're going to need to capitalize on that pretty quick. And then as the day goes on, just try and grind you out two or three good culls and uh, see what you can do from there. But like I said, normally then, or yesterday was really relevant that the first hour, hour and a half, they were chewing pretty much. Um, and then it just, it slowly starts to die off. Especially with these kind of conditions. It's, it's tough, but it's not impossible. So how would you describe the water clarity here? heavily stained. I mean, you can probably see six inches, maybe eight inches. Uh, it's, it's pretty dirty. It's not still not muddy for the Coosa River, but it's dirty. It actually looks pretty good, to be honest. I don't, I don't like it much clearer than this. I don't like it really much dirtier either. It seems to me, fishing around here growing up, if you can get dirty water in the later months, like the end of this month, June, July, I mean, it helps your bite a lot, but I guess because the fish are a lot more aggressive then and their strike zone's a lot bigger. Um, but this time of year when they're not really, they're not really wanting to eat. I mean, a lot of the fish you catch aside from a chad spawn deal are in some kind of spawning, whether they're garden, moving up to be on the bed. So they're not wanting to eat. They're thinking about spawning, but you happen to aggravate one or get it right on top of this bed, you'll catch it. Uh, not even tight fishing. So the, the really, really muddy water, I don't like in the springtime. I like it. If you can ever get some dirty water in the summer when it's hot, I mean, they bite really, really well. I just think they can't see as well. And they, like I said, they're aggressive. With that strike zone being a lot smaller in the springtime, you want it kind of clean, not too clean over they see you. So we got a question about how key is water movement on, on Logan? Uh, it's very key for spotted bass. Um, and there's been a lot of currents lately. Uh, they're starting to slow it down. And, you know, we're not getting quite as much rain as we were um, in March and stuff like that in February. So I think they're running one turbine today, which is not a whole lot. It's actually really good for spot fishing. Uh, I just didn't want to go out there and fool with them. But, when it comes to spots out there on that river, you need some kind of current. All right, guys, we still have a no volume issue. Doing the best we can with the technology we've got. 
We did have a nice comment. Wes, thanks for taking time to participate in this. Anytime. anytime. Who could complain about going fishing? Even if they're not biting very well. All right, we're getting some I can hears. So guys, if you are having some volume issues, maybe just uh, recycle your browser, close out and jump back in. We're not going anywhere. We'll be here for uh, another, well, pretty much two hours. See if we can find some fish, huh? Mm. Don't hold your breath. Are we trying? We're going to give them a shot. Yeah, we're going to give them a shot. Fishing a lot of history stuff. I fished when I was 12, 15, probably before I could ever even drive. So all them fish we used to catch in these places probably don't aren't even alive anymore. What's our water temperature? Uh, 65, 66, something like that. This morning, or when we put in, it was around 63. Come up with the grid, too, with the sun being out. Oh, there you go. Yeah, it's not bad. You know that rope tied to the tree, you go around. You don't, you don't want me to catch your fish, do you? Question? Not since the water temperature. I'm working on some questions. Hey, hey, we're live again. Are your feet are live? Getting there. We got two viewers. Guys, we're working through technical difficulties. I'm just I'm just sad they didn't get to see those two six and a half pounders that uh that you caught after the feed dropped all right we're getting some folks back so sorry we're having having some computer technology issues all right glad to have you back sam we can we can be heard Not sure what happened, guys, but we are back up and we'll go until the technology doesn't let us go anymore. So I made you move a little bit to see if we could find some cell signal. I think it was probably my phone. So... Go where you need to go to find the fish. That would be the million dollar question. And I have no idea. Looking for a clue. Water's in 
here is a lot cleaner. So what are you looking for back in an area like this? I have just your basic spawn in pocket, uh, right off the river, just a dead end pocket. Um, if there was any fish on the river that were wanting to fuck spawn, it's just a little place they can get into. Not hard to get in and out of. It's got a bunch of shallow water, got some cover in the water. Yeah, it should be, should be good. And they've been here in the past. I'm not saying they'll be there now, but it's just, it's, just that kind of place, the way it sets up is always good. Little points, little pockets and stuff that fish can get into and make a bed, be out of the weather, be out of the current. Wind won't affect them too bad. Guys, since we've had to restart, I would very much appreciate it if uh, you guys could go and uh, hit that share button and give us some questions since I've had to start over from, uh, we had a few questions there on the other feed. Be messing with my friend. That's Billy. What are you doing? Huh? Def you defending the herd, huh? All right, guys. Could Wes take the goat, or could the goat take Wes? I ain't miss, I ain't Comment the below. Goat can have it. I've seen a goat in action. I want no part of that. Not today. I do think your head may be a little harder. <laughs> He's still eyeballing. <laughs> he is. Making me nervous. Ah, they can't swim. Well, at this angle, he's got to come through me to get to you. Yeah, that's the whole point. I'm going to get out of the way. <laughs> Any top water bite? Uh, not at 10 o'clock in the middle of the day. Probably not. Not with bluebird skies and no wind. Nothing. Cold. Cold. Cooler. Not saying you couldn't get a bite on it. I just I don't have a whole lot of confidence in it with the condition. Probably could have got one this morning though. I'm sure. These fish on Logan Martin love with spooks this time of year. Large mouth and spot. How bad do you think the water level has affected bed fish? Pretty bad. Um, I'm sure it's impacted them on all the lakes, really. I mean, especially, not, not as much um, Logan because it has a winter pool. So a lot of these fish, I think they're accustomed to not spawning until they see that water level going up. Uh, but like a place like Neely Henry, uh, where I fish a lot, you know, we have Minnesota bends, which is a bad bend in the river. And when they have to open the floodgates and run the water real hard, all the water gets backed up around the Gadsden area and up the river. Well, the lower end, like Canoe and Shoal Creek and down by the dam, it all gets sucked dry because the water can't get down there. Where those fish that spawn down there in Canoe and Shoal and Beaver and all those major creeks, they go up there and spawn when the water was up a month ago. Well, then the water gets pulled off of all those fish and where they laid their eggs, their eggs are on dry ground now. And as soon as those eggs get dry, they're dead. So, I mean, there's probably been a, a lot of fish killed uh, spawning wise on the low end of the lake. I think the upper end probably from 77 up will be fine. I don't think it was affected near as bad. Um, but I hope we don't see effects of it in three or four years on the low end of Neely. Because um, we've actually had that happen two or three years in a row where those bad floods come late into April or even in April when the fish are really spawning really hard. And then those eggs are just dry. I mean, those fish are dead. That's a whole, that's a whole wave of spawners that we're not going to have. So that's basically you can think that's a whole age class of fish that aren't going to be there. And you won't see it like right now or even next year. But when, when those fish should be pound and a half to two and a half pounders, there may not be a whole lot of them. Where if you if you catch some fish down the lake, you'll catch some really big ones, good ones. And there's just not going to be that in-between fish, uh, not near as many of them as there normally would be.
And then the low end of the Coosa, the Lay, Mitchell, and Jordan, um, they have to keep those lakes within, I think it's a foot, uh, a full pool at all times. Um, so they don't really get affected by it much. So we got a question of what what is your setup uh, this AM? And I'm gonna expand that as you're trying to figure stuff out. You've been out here a little bit. What what all you got tied on on your deck? Uh, I've got a chatterbait. I've got a, this flipping bait I'm flipping, which is a Z Crawl Junior on just a five sixteenths ounce weight. Just a little bait you pitch around down the bank. Uh, trying, I mean, you're basically fishing for blind sight fishing is what I call it. Um, I've also got a black popping frog, a uh, swim jig, and just a little crawl type bait. I've been swimming around on a real lightweight on an eighth ounce. Uh, it don't fall as fast as this 5 16 It kind of just flutters around some of the really shallow grass that we've got today. Um, haven't had success on any of them, so we're still pecking around trying to get a bite and figure out where to go from there. Like I said earlier, this, this time of year is real, it's, it's, it's a timing deal, big time, because again, you have the shad spawn early, those fish feed real heavy, and you could go, you could get into that eight to 11, 12 o'clock mark, and may only get one or two bites, just cause those fish just aren't really aggressive. And then the afternoon bite will turn on where you'll catch, they'll turn back on and you'll catch a bunch from launch till end of the tournament or the end of the day, whatever you're fishing. saying I'm going to even catch one today, but my advice when you get into a situation like we're in where the conditions aren't very good, the fish probably fed good this morning and now they're kind of not, the best thing to do is just be slow down, fish slow, uh, get a confidence bait you like to pitch around on a light weight. And, uh, you might catch a really big female doing that that is just pulled up or sitting on a bed or something like that. All right, what colors do you like throwing into cover right now on Neely? So based on what you experienced yesterday. Uh, I'm a big black and blue guy, uh, just with the watercolor that we've got at Neely right now. And even here, it's about the same. Um, I'm fishing the green pumpkin right now. Uh, they're real big, but I mean, you can't go wrong with green pumpkin or black and blue. Uh, obviously the dirtier the water, you want to get a darker bait. Uh, the, the cleaner the water, um, you know, your nat more natural color, green pumpkin, uh, watermelon seed. Watermelon red is a really good color during the spawn. Uh, this Z Crawl Junior and a Zoom Baby Brush Hog and watermelon red are real good this time of year uh, if you've got the clean enough water. Do you think growing up on Neely helped you in breaking down new water in other places? Uh, yeah, in a way. I mean, as far as if I'm able to go to a, if they've got us on a shallow fishery during a tournament, um, it's somewhere other than Alabama. But I think the main deal that's helped me a lot is having an opportunity to fish a bunch of different lakes close to the house. I mean, you've got the Tennessee River, which is an hour from my house. You've got the Coosa, which is a shallow water fishery uh, from top to bottom. And then you've got Smith Lake that is an, also an hour the other way from my house. Um, so, I mean, just being able to fish all those different types of fisheries and learn how to break them down, uh, I think that's helped me the most, along with just the competition that's fishing around here. I mean, if you want to win, I mean, you really got to catch them every weekend you go out. I mean, nine times out of ten, the same guy's not going to win twice. And it just, there's, I stopped setting. Oh, we got it back this time. Sorry, guys. I'm going to have a chat with my tech guy. Everybody still got me? Audio good, all that kind of good stuff. We're doing the best we can out here, guys.
All right. Let's get back to the question here. What's your number one confidence bait no matter where you go? Uh, I'm probably, I got to try and find a swim jig bite uh, if it's this time of year. I mean, you get into the later months, the June, the July, and stuff like that. Uh, I always try and find a shallow bite. And like I said, in spring, I'd be trying to swim a jig or go. Attempt number three. It's working again. Hope we don't have to do this in 15 minute increments. I got one jumping in guys. We have tried to move a little bit closer to I-20 where we might have a stronger signal, not sure whether it's the phone or the internet may just not be able to push that HD video around the world. But how awesome is it that we can get out here and do this? Twelve of you jumping back in. I appreciate you guys coming back. I think Wes just wanted to run the Skeeter some. Don't let it explode. All right, guys, we're back here. Bassmaster Elite Angler, Wes Logan on Logan Martin. Struggling a little I'm, I'm trying to distract him as much as possible with technical difficulties. He's being a sport. Don't go where the fish are. Go where the cell service is. All right, once again, I need you guys to like and share this new video. Let's get folks back on here. I need some questions. I don't know. <laughs> Emerald Lagazi had uh, smell a vision. Maybe we need to figure out bite a vision. I bet somebody makes some money off of that. Is this an open tournament? We just out here having fun. But we are doing giveaways. So now I got three videos. I got to hunt through comments and pick some winners. What color are you throwing? Uh, black frog right now. Uh, I like black and I like green. That's about the only two I'll throw. Every now and then I'll throw a white one. Are they coming off bed? Uh, I think it's probably about half and half. Um, yesterday at Neely, we caught the majority of the fish we caught were postponed. I did see some fish actually locked on the bed. I'm sure it's the same here. Uh, it may be a little different with the water level being low and coming up. Uh, there might be a few more wanting to pull up here that haven't um, even thought about spawning yet. 
few guys that I know have caught some free spawn fish over here in the past week or two. Uh, so there's still a few of those left, but I think we're about half and half to, for a safe bet. A lot of stuff happening right now in the fish, fish world, not fishing world, the fish world. A lot of different states. That can be hard to keep up with too. I mean, you might go out one or two days and really catch them doing something and then go back and try it again in a couple days and they could be completely gone. I mean, it's just how it happens. Uh, they move so much in the springtime. So how many tournaments have you fished where you felt like you had them pretty well figured out and uh, during practice and then everything changed and going in that tournament I was going to have a legitimate shot to win it uh, flipping like punching mats and I mean just conditions changed um, they dropped the water about a foot and all those fish pulled out of my places and I didn't adjust well at all uh, but just in recent memory that's the one where I had a really really good practice and it just things changed and I didn't adjust quick enough you keep trying to force things to happen um, and that's kind of where you get into those situations where when you don't have a very good practice, you end up having one of your better tournaments of the year where you just figure it out during the tournament and stuff like that. And one of the guys that's one of the best at doing that, in my opinion, is Scott Canterbury, which I mean, he's one of my very good friends. But again, he, he can have the worst practice of his career and then go out and have a top 10 in the tournament just because he can make adjustments. He trusts his gut when he's out there to make a decision on the fly, and uh, it pays off for him. What kind of line have you got tied on? I've got 20 pound sun line, uh, sniper, four cars. Are the bass reacting to slower or faster moving baits? They hadn't reacted to any of mine yet. Um, but I mean, just with the conditions, uh, we got bluebird skies, middle of the day, they're probably not gonna be very aggressive. Um, so that's why I'm kind of just slowing down, pitching around, uh, throwing a frog a little bit, just in case I put it on top of one's bed, it might come up there. I might, I mean, if I could just see it roll or something, it doesn't really have to eat it, I'll know one's there. Well, we got the same same question that I think is the last time the video cut out. That uh, favorite confidence bait. Uh, What's your swim, swim jig? Uh? A, jig and a, a jig really all around. I mean, whether I'm swimming it, flipping it, uh, a dock jig. I mean, it's, it's just a big fish bait. And uh, in a tournament situation, that's what you're really looking for. You're not going to catch a whole lot on it, but you have a chance to catch a really big one. You got your front graph? You got those hummingbirds turned on? No. All right. I try not to, I mean, when you're fishing shallow, especially this time of year, I try and keep as many graphs as possible off. Uh, I'll run my back one some, uh, like for mapping. Like if I was in a, a legit tournament right now, I probably wouldn't have any of them on, uh, just because I know the lake and I don't, I don't have to have it to run. Uh, but like in an elite tournament, if I'm somewhere I'm unfamiliar with, I'll keep my back ones on. And if I get in, a, in, a, in an area where I know there's some fish where I'm gonna spend a little bit of time, I'll turn, I'll put them on standby just so to reduce noise. Um, but I mean, fishing shallow, basically the front ones are irrelevant when you're fishing really shallow. Now the eight to 10 foot, you could use it. Uh, but I, like I said, I try and keep them off as much as possible. Did you catch what the water temp was uh, when we were running over here? 
Uh, well, mid, on mid, the main river channel, it's like 62 or 63, and you get back in these pockets and it jumps up to 66, uh, 65, 67, just depending if you're on the sunny side or the shady side. Hey, Adam Long, yeah, we're on, uh, we're down on Logan Martin. That's we, we're trying a little new spot. Ventured off the beaten path, apparently, at least with cell coverage. Can we go in the loft now? Absolutely. Uh, the loft is open. We've been open. We've been maintaining regular hours. Uh, we're working appointments for sales. Um, service, same way. Call, make an appointment. We're, we're picking up boats at the gate. Uh, but uh, it's been working really well. Uh, a lot of appointments last Saturday. Folks coming in, looking at boats. But absolutely, the loft is open. We'll be open uh, to 5 today and 8 to 5 tomorrow. Have you ever fished Wadawi? I have not. Did you fish any shaky head yesterday? Uh, Neely Henry, I did not. Yep. I, uh, I swam a jig the majority of the day. Uh, just, I knew I had to have some big bites to beat Bradley. And that's really the only way. It's not the only way, but it's the way I have confidence in fishing. You can cover a lot of water. That's how he caught the majority of his, I'm pretty sure. He landed his bikes, I did basically how that day went. Um, but we had a good time, we caught a bunch of fish. Well, speaking of Neely Henry, when fishing on Neely, do you prefer the North Gadsden area or middle Rainbow City or lower? Uh, it's all time of year depending. Um, they can all turn on at, certain, at different times. Normally this time of year, when you, we don't have the water conditions that we've had, uh, the lower end normally um, excels as far as big fish and weight. Uh, you can catch fish across the whole lake, but I think the biggest fish in the lake live on the lower end, that would be from 77 to the down. And if those fish do bite, uh, you can't win anywhere else on the tournament. Or on the water, you can't win a tournament if those fish down there bite. Gotcha. If they're biting all over the lake, the lower end's gonna win every time. So, I mean, I've seen it happen since I was could walk. Your five to seven pounders live down there. Not saying that they don't, there's not some that live up, up the river too, but there's just a lot more of them on the lower end. You talk me through how you're, how you're fishing this frog. Uh, I'm just hitting these little grass patches. Uh, there's a few places that come out to a little bit deeper water. I'm just, if there's one sitting in it, I'm just trying to bring it over his head, uh, just trying to get some kind of reaction. Um, I'm not making real long casts and working it a lot. I'm probably working it only two or three feet, you know, then getting it out and going to the next place. But as you can see, we've run out of our grass. We've uh, went to the boat docks. I'll pitch a couple of them just to keep them on it. I don't think it's, I don't think it's time for all that yet. It's not late enough. So you can probably catch a few on them. But probably not in this section of the river. Normally, the low end of Logan is a lot better dock lake or dock situation, just by the water clarity and that there's not a whole lot on the bank that they can get on to feel comfortable. So, why do you uh, why do you prefer the black frog? Come off. Picking up where I left off yesterday. Oh my goodness. No, I mean that was a two pounder maybe, pound and a half. Just a bug bath, probably. Sitting in that shade. Picking up 
could have been, I think. That's a big one. That's a real big one. I got some of it. <laughs> I think I got the. Do you guys see it jump? It's like a sick oh, I know. I think I saw Dano mark it on the fish finder. Everything I said about they might not be on docks just to forget I just. <laughs> No jump. Ah, oh, I was I was swinging the. I apologize. I'm a little uh, I'm a little skittish after Scott hit me with a fish last week. So the hook sets are making me a little more nervous. <laughs> That was a good fish. We got 10 cameras on here and I bet I'm not on one of them yet. Sorry folks, I tried. Tried my best. All right. So that's two pretty quick bites. Back to back bites. What's uh, what's that got you thinking? Um, I was I was about to say something when that second fish bit. Um, it, them fish could be remnants from a shad spawn, uh, because on them floating docks. Uh, um, them fish will get the shad will spawn against the floats of uh, floating dock. And them fish could be just stays just sitting still sitting under those docks in the shade uh, where they were into that shad spawn this morning, or it might be a complete shade dip. I mean, it's just hard to say. Probably a little bit of both, but it wouldn't surprise me if it was remnants from a shad spawn bill on those floats. I will say one thing about flipping um, floating docks. There's not a ton of them on Logan, but I've caught them flipping floating docks on other lakes across the country. Uh, you need to pay attention to your line a lot because most of the time your bites are going to come within two or three feet. I mean, they're not under those docks on the bottom. Most of the time they're two or three foot just suspended, uh, eating brim and shad and stuff that are eating off the bottom of those floats. So what did you get those bites on? Uh, Zoom Z Cross Junior. Pump. What hook? Uh, Gamagatsu four out flipping hook. That the point must be cut off of it. <laughs> and a five sixteenths flipping weight. I can't believe that. <sighs> I kind of can, honestly, but. Brandon, thanks for tuning in. Yeah, we're out on Logan Martin. Trying to get through some of these questions. There was a question about uh, what's your, your reel set up and uh, what gear ratio are you, you using? Uh, I'm using a Lose Pro TI. Uh, it's a 7 5 to 1 gear ratio. It's just, a, I mean, I, I got, that's mainly every reel I've got. Um, a flip, for flipping, frogging, swim jig, anything like that, I'm going to be using the Lose, Lose Pro TI. For my spinner baits and chatter baits and cranking and stuff like that, I like the uh, Lose BB1 Pro Series. Um, the BB1 from Lose and the, just a regular BB1 has, it doesn't have the anti-reverse, so if you feel it, you'll be reeling it and it'll click back like half a turn. Uh, David Fritz designed that for deep cranking. I don't really like it for like spinner baits and stuff because I like to 
do a lot of action with my reel, um, spinner baits and chatter baits. So the, the Pro Series has the anti-reverse, that's why I just um, choose to use that one. But those are the two reels that I've got in my boat that I've, I'm using this year. I'm really happy with them. Like, really good product, best, best reels I've ever had by far. I mean, it, I don't throw my shoulder out by halfway through the day. We had a comment to sling a wacky worm back in there, back under these ducks. Oh, you can get bit on a wacky worm for sure. It's just, I'm trying to cover a lot of water. I mean, I, seeing what I just saw, I mean, in the tournament, or even a practice situation, uh, seeing how those two fish were set up, I mean, it should be a, a wacky rig bite for sure. No doubt about that. But honestly, I don't have a spinning rod in the boat either. That's Interstate 20 right there, right? Yes, sir. So for you guys asking where we are. Junior just looks just like a little brim. And when it falls down, it, it's done went down too far. Fish thinks it's an easy meal. Which if they come off, I guess it don't hurt them. All right, guys, get those comments in there. We still got to pick winners at the end of this, so and we need some questions. Everybody's talking about where we are. <laughs> Everybody wants to know now. Fish that, big, fish that big on Logan Martin's hard to come by, from what I've heard. Really hard. Would a crankbait in this situation be a good search bait? possibly on some shallow docks or even shallow cover. Um, it's just hard to say because there's so many fish in different kind of moves. I'm sure you can get a few to react to it, don't get me wrong. You can fish over a lot of fish too and not know it. But that's where the, the guessing game comes in. And if you, if you see the right bank or the right situation where it can come up, I mean, for sure, I wouldn't, I wouldn't not try it. It's just so calm today. There's hardly any wind. Reaction might be hard to get. Dogs are having a good day. We've got Neil Harris joining us from work. And you are always working. Uh, or you're always out fishing. One of the two, right? Thanks for joining us, Neil. How many of y'all caught? None. Zero. Just lost two. Lost two. Pound and a half, two pounder, and a five or a six. Depending on how skinny it was. Had the mouth of the six, but no. Looked like it had pretty good length from what I saw. <laughs> I know I hit it and it pulled back. They don't pull back very often. We've caught one, whoever asked. I think he wanted that one. I mean, how do you hook two or one like that and lose the other two? Maybe they, they weren't as hungry. Probably not. That's your basic Coosa River buck bass. 14, 14 and a half inches, pound and a half. Or just up there on a little piece of wood. Thank you, buddy.
We got a recommendation of a solid white cheddar bait. Is the water up or down currently? It is one foot from being full post. From what I read, or in years past, normally May 9th is the day that they try and get it to actually full post. They start bringing it up on April 1st and try and get it to full post by May 9th. Alright. So how deep would you say those uh those fish were? Uh, the, 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 the dock fish, uh, that dock's in about six to eight. Do you use the loose rods as well? No, sir. I use it for whoever asks. Um, uh, I use uh, I use arc rods. They're a company out of Port Port St. Lucie, Florida. I've been with them for two years. Uh, Mr. Louie, the owner, he's a stand out guy. I mean, one of, probably one of my best friends. Not even in the industry, but just being a good guy. And, Pro series, which is the $149 uh, retail price range. Um, Randall Tharp has a series with us uh, called the Tharp series, which is, is what I'm using right now. I'm using his offshore special. It's a 7.6 medium heavy. I think he has seven or eight uh, actions in his series. And then we have a Lancer Pro Series, which is the lower retail price. I think they retail for $99. Probably the best $99 rod blank on the market. Um, and it's, that's not just me saying that. I mean, there's a bunch of guys that use other rod brands that have said that as well. And then our high-end rod is the Reinforcer. Uh, it retails for $369 or $379, a high-dollar rod. Uh, but, I mean, with, with that high-dollar rod, you're getting all the best components you can get you know you got the all titanium guides uh, the premium port handles 46 ton blank where the invoker pro is a 40 ton blank it's just a, you don't have a rod out do you no okay i wasn't paying attention i was talking um and then what was that 40 ton blank and that ton, all the ton means is just how much sensitivity you're going to have with the rod so that's where the price range difference is. Uh, you can check those out on Tackle Warehouse or ArtRods.com. Or you can message me. I'll be happy to answer any questions you might have. You doing all right today? Yeah. You ever have a tournament coming up? Uh, I think they have one Saturday or tomorrow. Uh, we're doing a, a Facebook Live thing for Bucks Island Marine. Oh, okay. In Southside. We're just out here having fun. I hear you. Right. Good luck. We're gonna need it. I'm doing yard work. <laughs> I'll be doing that tomorrow. Uh, what are you pitching? Zoom Z Crawl Junior. Oh, five sixteenths ounce weight. I like a five sixteenths. It's just it's a good all around weight for any time you're flipping two foot or even not even two foot, a foot to eight, ten feet. It's just got a good rate of fall with this bait. I feel like you go to a quarter or three sixteenths, it falls too slow. You go to a three eighths or a half and it falls too fast. Got another question about uh, pre-spawn or post-spawn. Yeah. I think you might have a few more 
especially this time of year than you normally would post spawn just because it was warmer um, earlier in the year uh, on a couple full moons you might have had some fish spawn earlier than they normally would but one misconception i think a good many people have is not all the fish spawn in the lake at the same time i mean you'll i've caught fish i'm not gonna say they were that i saw them on the bed spawning uh, but i've caught some fish on this river system in july and august that i don't know how they wouldn't be on the bed and they i mean they have a bloody tail it's just everything says they were on the bed you just couldn't see them i, I think fish in this river system and really all across the country spawn up into june and july easy Are you using GPS trolling motor? No, I'm using my trusty left foot. <laughs> no, I've got my uh, Minn Kota oil track. You know, it's got that power steering. Doesn't wear you out during the day. Not gonna have all that tension where you break a bunch of cables like we used to in the past. Or bluegill, whatever. You yeah, want to call that's it. gonna be hard to see on the phone. They're just sitting up under those floats. Yeah. I know it's hard to see, but that's just kind of the deal with these floating docks. I, I'm really surprised we hadn't got a bite off the pole dock. I don't know why we haven't. Another question about where we are on the lake, guys, that's that's Interstate 20. Let me see if I can get my finger in there, right there. Bunch of folks seem like they know exactly where we are, so I'll let you guys comment again. It's not a secret place by no means. I don't think there's any secrets left uh, on any lake, really. With the advanced mapping that we have, and the whole industry is just starting to get a lot bigger, you know, kids getting into fishing and stuff like that, everybody's getting fish more. And I, I mean, honestly, the more you go fishing, the more you're gonna learn. So I mean, with everybody out on the water, you're gonna, you're gonna find the good places. And it just comes down to executing and timing, getting a little bit lucky. So what do you not like about new docks? They just, I, I don't think the fish get accustomed to them uh, until after a while. And it may not be a newer dock. Which, like I said, I haven't been up here in five or six years. They may have just put some X brakes on there. But you can tell the, the X brakes are new wood. I don't, the poles may not be, and I don't think the deck is. Fish are real finicky. Uh, I've seen like, if you have a really good bank, let's, let's just say it's got grass on it or a little few pieces of wood or something, and they come, somebody comes and builds a house on it. I mean, even if they don't touch the bank, I've, I've just had experiences where the bank's not any good anymore. It never is good again. I don't know, I don't know what the deal with that is, but I've seen it happen numerous times. What brand of line and weight are you using? Uh, I'm using Sunline uh, Shooter right this second. No, I'm using Sniper. I'm sorry. Sunline Sniper, 20 pounds, 5, 6, 10 pounds of weight. If I'm flipping uh, a little bit heavier cover, uh, I like to use Shooter Sunline. It's just a little bit stiffer line, and, and I'll bump it up a little bit. Just a personal preference, I'll probably put 25, really gnarly cover. This, this shooter from Sunlight is just so smooth. It's really perfect for lightweight flipping, casting, any kind of stuff you want to do like that. You got your weight pegged? I do. 
How do you choose pegged versus not pegged? Uh, I'm, I'm normally always a pegged guy. I've seen a few circumstances uh, in spawning situations around like isolated wood where you, you don't have to peg it and you'll get a few more bites. It's just you got to kind of tell you what the fish want, but normally I always start out pegged. Are you swimming or jigging your bait? Uh, kind of a little bit of both. Uh, I just let it sink three or four feet, and then I'll hop it a few times. Uh, the bites that I've got, the three bites that I've had, I mean, they had it on the fall when I picked up, they had it. So uh, you don't really have to work it a whole lot. Um, and a lot, it's not really that deep, so it's getting to the bottom pretty quick. But it seems like when it went by, uh, they got it. Why don't you use left-handed reels when flipping so you don't have to change hands? Are you targeting uh, dead grass or new grass coming above the surface when we're... Uh, most of it's new, uh, with the water just coming up. Uh, just some bank grass that's grown uh, in the last week or two. I haven't seen a lot of dead grass, which I haven't been in a lot of places. Most of it's really, really shallow. I mean, it's only got six or eight inches of water on it. Hey, 
So the comment about uh, flipping left-handed, he, he followed up with Luz has the best reel in the market for left-handed, and it's no different than spinning than a spinning reel uh, to him. take the plate off and pull the brakes out, the centripetal, centripetal brakes. Uh, on this one, I mean, that's adjusting your in, your inner brakes right there. I mean, it's just that simple. And it helps, like if you're going down a bank, not no wind blowing, you tighten it up a little bit. It's blowing real bad, you just tighten it up a little bit. And conveniently, we do have loose reels available in the loft. We've even got some left-handed, I believe. So in a tournament situation, would you double back to the dock uh, where we lost the two fish? I mean, it'd be hard. I mean, I'd probably hit it again. I mean, not just because there was two fish on it, but as far as getting those two to bite, I mean, that's not going to happen. In, in a freak the world if you were meant to win the tournament you might go back over there and she bite again but, I mean, the chances of that fish biting again today are slim to know it does happen uh, and it happens a lot more in spawn like if the fish was actually on a bed up on the bank but if that fish just suspended under a dock I, mean, I pulled her out you know she jumped come off it's highly unlikely but there could be another one there I mean, there's a reason there was two fish on there and there wasn't none on any of the other dock Well, we got a request. I want you to go fish the next slough on the left, please. I was about to go over. I might, I might say, who asked? Who asked? Uh, Ralph Lucas. Jeff said he'll be going to Bucks Island the next couple of weeks and look at a new boat. Well, thank you. We'd love to have you. Well, we're, we need a lot more. We just got in a couple of pretty falcons today and, uh, and we've got, oh yeah. We are slowly getting word from our manufacturers. Things are getting uh, getting rolling. 
Everybody's trying to work through uh, all the craziness that's been going on. So we are uh, hoping to have even more boats coming in before too long. We got a bunch on order with Skeeter. We are the we had a ZXR twenty one that we picked up from the classic and that one has sold. We have one FXR select left. And I think out of the seven boats we've got on order right now, two of them are uh, are already sold. But it's mostly uh, ZXR twenties and I think a couple FXRs that are that are coming. Don't quote me on that. I've got most of what we've got on order actually listed on our website, so they're pretty clearly marked that they're on order and not, not in the showroom. Alright. I don't know. I got all distracted. We got about 30 minutes. Start at the mouth. <laughs> Ralph Lucas must know what he's talking about, right? Well, Fred, I appreciate the comment. He said, I sure wish Bucks was closer. Cabela's in Huntsville is short-handed, and I'm itching to be on the water. I think, Fred, have you got, is your boat at Cabela's getting service? I think you've mentioned that before. If that's the case, I would definitely encourage you to at least call call down if you haven't already and talk to Angela our service manager and see if she's got any ideas or options are you intentionally targeting the shady side For some of you that maybe missed our first two attempts, 
in Wes's defense on what he's picking to fish today, a lot of it's got to do with cell service because we dropped uh, two of these. So I've kind of forced them to go some different places. A lot of doing these lives, one thing I'll tell you that I've found kind of fun and uh, I've learned a lot of, well, there we go. What was that on? The uh, same thing, Z Crawl Junior. All right. That's just, it's a, I mean, normally I flip docks with a jig, a uh, dock jig, a, a three eighths uh, from dirty jigs. But I just had this tied on, and plastic seem will get you uh, a few more bites. Fish that size a lot, uh, just get you an extra bite or two. And doing this, this filming situation, I mean, I want to get as many bites as I can, show a little bit of action. Anyway. So a uh, Josh, let me see a Josh Heron. Oh boy! Uh, why do you swim a jig down like a jerk bait? I want to know the secret. Why do I? Why do you swim a jig down like a jerk bait? Did I do that? <laughs> I think he's giving you a hard time. If I had to guess. My 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 special swim jigs I got actually suspend. Like when you reel them down, they'll stop and sit like a jerk bait. So that's probably why it looks like I'm doing this. What depth are we in? I don't know. I just saw some docks. So I started at 5.5 feet. What the boat's sitting in. So your dock's probably going to be in around three. Three to four. Ralph Lucas said, I told you. Some nice fish have come out of the back near the rock and piers. Thanks, Dana, for throwing the uh, phone number up in there. Bigger to mouth, buddy. That's a 
pretty fish too. Probably a pre-spawn. I mean, it's just real thick. Most of the time you get a male, they'll be long and lanky. I mean, that fish is really thick, pretty. Got a gut, no marks on it. Three, two and three quarter, two and seven eighths. For, 36 for anybody curious there's there's the uh there's the dock right there Are you fishing the Coosa River team trail tomorrow? I don't know. <laughs> I, no, I, don't. I mean, I, plan, I got a lot of work planned to do. So I, I don't know. Probably not. Got a question of how old was that fish? How old? Yeah. Dana chimed in with around three years old. Two or three. I mean, don't they gain like three quarters of a pound a year on a, on a healthy lake? That's a northern bass, right? I mean, well, I mean, they're north. I mean, them tiger bass grow faster, don't they? Like the Florida strain, don't well, they? Yeah. Uh, where those uh, big uh, Florida strains are, I mean, it might only be a two-year-old. Where here, it might be a three, three and a half, something like that. So why not throw a cinco around the docks rather than the jig? Uh, they buy cinco, hundred percent. Uh, it's just a cop fish bait. I feel like a Senko is a better bait pitching and dragging on the bottom because it falls so fast and it's got that straight down fall. So when you're targeting fish on a Senko, unless you use a really light weight, uh, you're basically fishing on the bottom. And I think some of these fish might be suspended where that, that floating of that jig or this Z-Craw Junior uh, might get you an extra bite or two just the way they set their set up. That's today. And every day is different. And there's no doubt about that. You could come out here tomorrow and not get a bite off of here. And they'd be all, they'd run shade or run grass. Nine times out of 10 on the Coast River in the spring, you better be fishing grass if you want to win. I mean, that's just the big fish live in the grass, the majority of them. They like it, they feel comfortable in it. They eat in it, they fall in it. Chuck, we are on Logan Martin fishing some docks. Here, let's see how big that thing hold, is. Hold on, let me hold it up to the camera. Oh, look at that, guys! Uh, fish of the day. I got. I caught Dano's bass. <laughs> Seven minutes. And the internet's telling us there's uh, some
some good ones up in the back. Kind of curious about that giant floating duck over there. The giant floating duck. You gotta go get your job on. I'll hold the camera. <laughs> If it were warmer. I'll go check the ones in the back. Yeah, I appreciate it. You gotta hook, you gotta hook them though, let me know what size they are. Okay. <laughs> Make sure to bring them in the boat. Yeah. You gotta put them all in the live well and then take a picture holding all four of them up. Do you think having your front electronics on affect the fish? Yes. Shallow water situations. Like I mean, if you've ever been swimming in the summertime or something and get under the water next, I mean, you ain't got to be close to your transmission. I mean, it's clicking always. And the clicking may not be that, that bad, bad of a thing, but the pinging, like there's, a, there's noises that you can't hear that those fish can feel with their lateral line. And I mean, there's a bunch of noise going on on your boat anyway. The least amount that you can make is what I, I mean, I'm trying to get at doing that. So how do you, uh, what are your thoughts on Hydrowave? I don't run one. Uh, I've never ran one. I know they work in certain situations uh, very well. And there's some guys that use them in shallow water situations. But in the, the Hydrowave is a different noise. Much rather be fishing than working. Well, we are blessed to do one and the same. At least today. A question, do you use the 360 imaging? situation I mean you happen to have it running and you see some stuff that's just off the wall that nobody knows about and it gets you an extra bite or two I mean that can be the difference in getting a check uh, winning the tournament uh, getting enough points to make it classic I mean just anything that can help you get an extra bite uh, is monumental in this sport How much time do we have, Dano? You wanna do that recap thing? You wanna do that recap thing? Yeah. Two minutes. Two
So do you move along this wall or just skip to the next dock? Uh, in terms of the situation, I would probably just kick it on high. I mean, you can pitch up there. I mean, there might be one on bed you can't see or something like that. You get lucky to get a bite in between. There's some situations where they get in between the dock really good. If I was in a tournament, honestly, and I was going in between docks, I would probably pick up a chatterbait and try and get a bite. You know, a fish kind of hanging off the bank a little bit on one of these seawalls. Will said, thank you. Thank you guys for doing this. Man, it has been our pleasure. This has been a lot of fun to do. Dano and I are going to go back and uh, do a little recap from the loft. I've been getting a lot out of those because I'm more worried about ducking. And I can't learn near as much. So uh, Dano has been doing a good job of going back through uh, the, the different uh, setups you guys are fishing. And we're glad to be able to get out here. They can help. <laughs> can you give your top three factors you consider when preparing for a lake or river you aren't familiar with? If I got a tournament next week, I want to look at next week's weather, see what the fish are going to do, not what they're doing like right now, right this second. That's the three big things going somewhere new. New anchor right here. I don't know how deep it is. Ronnie Moore said, Sup, Wes. Better, he better keep fishing so he doesn't get smoked anymore. Yeah, I got smoked yesterday. I think he's telling you they're ruthless, man. Ruthless. Man. Alright. Ronnie Moore is the the Bassmaster Live guy. The future Tommy we, Sanders. We've had him uh, join us a couple of times and it's awesome to see. Ronnie is awesome at his job. He's doing a great job. It's best when he picks up the mic. Huh? Dano says he's best best when he grabs a microphone. Marking waypoints. All right, I'm gonna try and get up here. You guys talk loud. Got a little wind. So, first of all, guys, sorry for the uh, sorry for the technical difficulties. We're learning as we go here. Where we've got signal and things and 
I think maybe we had a good download speed, but not a good upload speed there for a minute. Um, I mean, every time we do this, Wes, you're getting bites. Oh, yeah. And you're putting stuff together. And I know this isn't necessarily where you would have wanted to come. No, but, but I mean, like, I mean, we made the most of it. Uh, and like you said about putting things together, I mean, that's the big thing. With, I mean, us, like when we're on the Elite Series or on a different leg or something, we don't know. Like, I mean, like I said, I've, I've been here once in six years. And just, get, if you can get one bite to give you a clue, a lot of times you can start putting the pieces of the puzzle together. But the hard part is, is getting that first bite. And it just, I mean, we figured out how to get a bite or two today. Uh, it's not necessarily the section of the river I would have liked to have fished, um, but we were able to make the most of it. Uh, had an opportunity to really big fish, caught one good one and a couple little ones. So well, all then, in all, it was a good day. So after today and then after seeing what you did, what, what were the keys? Because we can see the docks and we can see, right. you know, your presentations and stuff. But what do you think was there holding? Uh, I, I, I swear, I mean, I go back to, I think it's that Shad's bomb deal. I mean, I think just what I saw yesterday, and I, and I wasn't here around it this morning. Uh, I didn't get here quite early enough, but it just, I, I've seen it so many times where those fish will just hang around those areas. And you can't catch them on like a chatterbait or a spinnerbait or a swim jig like you would in the mornings. You've got to slow down and really pick it apart. The fish are still there. You've just got to get them to bite in a different way. They're in a different mood. They're kind of just hanging out because they know when the sun starts going down, the shad are coming back. I mean, they're going to get to eat all night again. So they don't really leave those areas once they get there. And I think that had a lot to do with it. So you think those fish that you, that you were getting bites for were post-spawn fish looking yes. for a yes. shad spawn? Yes. On, I think, I mean, I don't know how they couldn't be. I don't know why. Why would there have only been fish on the, the floating dock and not the pole dock? I mean, I know I caught those on a pole dock, but those docks set up really good. I mean, they're just right out of the current fish coming in and out. You're getting a pre-spawn fish or a post-spawn fish. Anywhere you can get a fish, that's a place you can catch one traveling is good. But in that other situation, I mean, shad spawn on floating docks. And why was there only a bite on a floating dock in there? I mean, that's it's just, that's the light bulb kind of went off where, I mean, you might, I mean, run that or something like that. And, and it may not work. It might've just been the pocket. That fish might've come off the bank, just eased over there. And it could have been the male and the female that they moved together. I don't know. I mean, it's kind of ironic that they bit back to back cats. Yeah. Um, I haven't seen that very often. Not on a floating dock in eight foot of water. So if you'd have been here first thing this morning, what would you have likely started with? Oh, uh, I would have probably, I'd have probably ran some seawalls. Uh, just to check a shad spawn for spotted bass. With, uh, what would you have thrown? Uh, chatterbait, uh, spinnerbait. This is a really good spinnerbait lake on a shad spawn deal. Uh, just silver blades, just a translucent color, just something that looks like shad. You don't want it to be over, I don't know the word I'm looking for. You don't want it to be really bright, like a solid white and solid white blades. I feel like they miss it a lot, but the more natural you can get, uh, they're more likely to eat it a little bit better. A fluke's good, um, a spook, spook. People have been crushing them on a spook here in the mornings. I've heard on the points and rip wrap and stuff like that. And that's all a spotted bass deal. Uh, I just, I mean, there's some uh, post spawn largemouth, but I, I don't think I would target those first thing in the morning. Just by, I got here at like 6.15 this morning and fished some largemouth stuff and it, it wasn't happening. I mean, it was dead, real, uh, real shallow. And this afternoon it would probably turn on with it being warmer. Uh, and in the morning might be good with it being a warmer night. Um, just those fish really shallow or real temperamental when it, that weather changes. So recap a little bit for us your gear, uh, the, the, and I know you threw a swim jig, which you didn't get any bites on, um, and then uh, your flipping bait. Just kind of recap real quick that stuff. And uh... I was flipping with a, uh, a Tharp series from Art Rods. This is actually uh, Randall's offshore special, but I use this rod a lot for like that shallow water flipping, the 18, 17, 20 pound line stuff. A lightweight, three eighths, five sixteenths, quarter. Uh, it's just it's got enough backbone to be a flip, a good flipping rod in two foot, five foot, something like that. Because when you get into that like a heavy action rod and you're not using really big line or a big bait, it just it overpowers it. And I don't like it because I can't feel my bait good. And it's got enough tip on it to where it just I mean, if one gets it up on the bank and you crack him, I mean, it's not going to fling him out of the water because he's sitting that deep. Where with a heavy rod, if it don't bend a lot, you're going to fly him over your trolling motor and you come off. Um, but I was using 20 pound uh, Sunline Sniper. I was using a sniper on this. Like I said earlier, I use the, the shooter when I'm flipping more thick cover, bigger line, 25, 30 pounds, something like that. But the sniper's good for anything else. Swim jigs, buzz, buzz baits. I, mean, I, do it for, I use it for a lot of stuff. 5 16 ounce arc tungsten weight. Uh, Zoom Z-Crawl Jr. Green pumpkin with a Gamagatsu 4-aught flipping hook. Uh, 
uh, lose Pro TI. That's basically the reel I use for everything except for winding, uh, spinnerbaits and stuff, and I'll use that BB1 Pro Series. But that's what we got our bites on today. Uh, if I had to come back, like I said, in the morning, I would probably run a bunch of seawalls and points. I mean, I'm pretty sure you can get a limit pretty quick doing that, and then you just go try and catch it for four or five pounder. And I mean, it's not been taking a lot of weight on this lake. I mean, I don't fish over here a lot, but I see on Facebook the results, and 15 to 16 pounds, 17 pounds is about, I mean, that's it. I mean, whoever catches that five pounder with your two and three quarters and three pounders, that's, that's your guy that's gonna win. Well, guys, uh, as always, Wes, first of all, thank you for uh, playing with us. Oh, yeah. It's always fun to kind of see what these guys' brains do. Um, but for those of you guys that paid attention uh, and, and stayed with us through our difficulties, uh, we really appreciate it. We'll get back today and we'll do a little bit of a recap um, at the shop uh, this afternoon, Michael and I, um, to kind of go back over some of this stuff. We've got, we've got, you know, it's not his rod, but we've got some similar action type rods in there. But we do have the hooks, we do have the z Craw Juniors, and we've got the reels in, in, in at the loft. Um, if you guys are looking for what Wes is using, feel free to come in. Um, and I'm sure you could private message him to find out where to get some of his other gear. But again, thank you to everybody. Thanks to Wes and Zoom for putting together the giveaway. Thanks for Wes and Zoom, uh, Wes and uh, Dirty Jigs and uh, Fish, Life. Fish Life and uh, Randall and, and his wife over there. Uh, amazing people. Thank you very much for taking part of this. And then obviously Angelo at Bass Boat Concepts for throwing the uh, the Skeeter Assist step handle in there too. That's a pretty big deal. It is. Um, but Wes, most of all, thanks to you. And obviously love doing this, but can't wait to see you get back out there on the I'd, I'd like to be fishing a, a big tournament. Uh, yesterday got my wheels going a little bit. You know, there it got you. me back in the groove a little bit. So I appreciate uh, Alabama Bass for letting me do that. But I wanted to reiterate the, the fish life, fish care stuff. Uh, that live well treatment that we're giving away, I mean, these fish right now are in, I mean, they're in rough shape. I mean, and it's not from us catching them, it's just the process of the spawn really wears those fish out. If you're in, in a tournament situation, you're gonna see it weigh in, all, they got cuts on them, sores on them. And that's not from being in a live well or nothing, that's just what they go through when they're up there rolling around, making their beds and stuff like that. So that live well treatment just, it helps put a coating back on those fish when they get in your live well, it gives them a lot of energy, it calms them down after you catch them. It's just a good thing to have. They have the live well cleaner too that gets all that ammonia and stuff out of there. So be sure to check those guys out. And uh, that's really all I got. Appreciate doing it, man. Take a wrap. All right, we will see you back at the shop this afternoon for another goof-off session, Michael and me being a couple of dorks. Thanks for spending some time with us.